Hi again, it's Tim, Golf 5 Tango Mike. Today we're going to have a final look at NFED half waves. Hi, thanks for stopping by again. And if you're a newcomer, think about clicking that subscribe and the bell button as well to tell you about any future videos. So thanks once again for joining. Now, two things I want to cover today. First of all, I want to look into the radiation pattern of an NFED half wave, and we're going to look uh, at how it, ra how it radiates on different bands, actually. We're going to look at an example of a 66 foot long, that's a 20 meter long NFED half wave, which will be uh, fed with a 49 to 1 transformer, which would then be resonant on 40, 20, 15, and 10. And we're going to look at how it, uh, how it sort of radiates out from those four different bands. Second thing I want to do today as well is just to clarify one or two things from the last video concerning the LC tuned monoband version and how one or two people think you could use that on other bands. We're going to see demonstrate that you can't, but also to have a look at things like its efficiency and just discuss why people would use uh, monoband NFED half waves rather than just put up the 49 to 1 version. Both are great antennas, it's just discussing why the mono bander could be a viable option. Anyway, let's move on. Let's look first of all then at how an NFED half wave radiates across those different harmonically related bands. Let's take a look. Okay guys, let's have a look at the uh, NFED half wave on the different bands. So don't forget the 66 foot NFED half wave, that's 20 meters long approximately, gives you resonance on four bands. Now the main band it has resonance on of course is 40 meters because as we probably know, 66 feet is a half wavelength on 40. And just like a 40 meter dipole, the uh, typical radiation pattern that you will see on this sort of antenna is very much the case that the, uh, the current maximum, the, uh, the place where you really do the business in terms of uh, getting your signal out, is at the middle of the antenna. Okay, so you have a high current area here and high voltages on the end. And bearing in mind, when you uh, mount an NFED half wave, you've got to be careful it isn't within easy reach of children and pets, etc., because there is a, a high voltage point there, a bit like the ends of a dipole. So both the, say that's the feed point, and that's the end point, are high voltage areas on the NFED half wave. So for 40 meters, the radiation pattern is typically like a dipole, with maximum radiation, maximum current area in the center. Let's look at the same antenna now, the same length of wire, and how it behaves on 20 metres. Now, on 20 metres, this antenna is now a full wave antenna. And when you operate as a full wave antenna, you begin to see a slight breakup of the pattern. And typically, this is what happens. Unlike 40 metres, where you have a continuous curve with the current maximum in the middle, here, you now see a breakup and a null. And what happens is when you operate on a, as a full wave, whether it's on a doublet, for example, or whether it's on an NFED half wave, when you cut a full wavelength of wire, in this case 66 feet, which is a full wavelength on 20, what you do is break up the pattern a little bit. So you effectively what you have are two independent half waves. Because don't forget, this is a full wave. This operator operates now as two independent half waves, okay? So you've got these two, well, two sets of lobes, all right? And that's how that works. So you begin to see a slight difference now in the radiation pattern when it becomes a full wavelength. Let's look now at 15 and 10. So here we have 15 meters, and the breakup of the pattern continues. We now have this as a three half wave antenna because effectively now this is one and a half wavelengths long on 15 meters so therefore you have effectively three mini half waves with more nulls in between and finally you have 10 meters and you probably guessed by now this is now four half waves effectively a two half wave sorry a two wave antenna so you have greater breakups, but we're still with these four lobes. So there you have it. That's how the NFED half wave works on various bands that are harmonically related to the band of, uh, well, of the lowest frequency that the antenna is cut for. In this case, 
40 meters. Okay, now you've looked at how NFET half waves radiate according to their different bands on the 49 to 1. Let's look back again at the LC tuned monobander against the 49 to 1 NFET half wave just to confirm why I couldn't use the LC tuned on the harmonically related bands, namely 20, 15 and 10. And also the differences in how uh, broadbanded the 49 to 1 was, say on 40 metres, compared with the LC tuned version. Let's fire up the analyzer then for the um, LC tuned monobander. So there you go, 40 metres. Now, have you noticed something already? Look how high, high a Q this is. So we'll go to two, two to one. All right, now on the 49 to one, it's much more forgiving, but look how sharply this dips. So we've got 1.5 to one is about 7.03. Yeah, 1.3, 1.2, 1.1. Yeah, 1.2, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19,
how many bands can, re can we reliably turn our radios on and operate on? 80 metres in the evening, and in the day and the evening, 40 and 20. Um, if you've got the room for top band, good luck to you, right? And at the moment, doing because we're in the summer and the weather's nice, we can probably expect some sporadic E on 10 and 6 and these other bands. Fantastic. But to be honest, the bread and butter bands are 80, 40 and 20. They're the bread and butter bands. And I don't have room for 80 metres, not really. I can squeeze it in, but it'll completely mash up the other higher bands. So it's 80 or bust for me. And at the moment, I, I just like 40, 20 and 10, a bit too much to try and squeeze 80 in. So that's my opinion on it. Because if I put a low doublet around you to get 80 metres in, it'll have to be low to run around fences and things. Well, that'll compromise me on the higher bands. I'm not prepared to do that. So I'm a 40 and a 20 man, really, like a majority of people are these days because of the way that the sunspot cycle is. So if you have the room to put up uh, a 66 foot length of wire for 40 and a 33 foot wire for 20, and you have room to run two monoband antennas with a little antenna switch, why not? Now you might say, well, why don't you put two dipoles up or a fan dipole? Well, if you put up two wires, for example, running horizontally or as slopers, whatever you want to do, you don't got to worry about that coax standing down in the middle of your garden, have you? Or the ladder line, okay? So they are viable options, okay? If you want to keep it as stealthy as possible, and focus on two key bands, then perhaps having a 40 meter monoband end fed half wave and a separate one for 20 might get you better results. Who knows? If anyone wants to try it, it might be worth it if you have the space and you fancy making a video or doing a study on it, then compare an LC tuned versus uh, a multi band end fed half wave and see what the differences are in terms of performance. Anyway, there's my two pennies worth. I thought I'd clear it up. Either way, I think the NVED half wave is a really good option. I especially think they're a great portable antenna. That's why I think where they really shine. Because they're so easy to get up, so easy to deploy. There are other options out there which are great antennas too. It's just that I've had some great results with them. And I'll always use it portable. At home, probably a centre fed balanced antenna like a doublet just about wins. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I hope to catch you again. Stay safe. This is Tim G5TM, wishing you 73. Bye-bye.